I'm Peter Brown from Tiny and Sons Glass. Tiny and Sons Glass was established in 1978 with my father and brother and I. We're at 575 Washington Street in Pembroke. We're certified and qualified to do all your windshield replacement and repair. Tiny and Sons Glass is a community-based business. We have 12 mobile vans that come to you. If the weather's bad, you can come here to the shop. We have a nice waiting area, TV, Wi-Fi, kid-friendly, pet-friendly. We also can move about 15, 20 cars a day through the shop. Perfect for you when the weather's bad. So come on down to Tiny and Sons Glass if you need your windshield replaced or repaired. Tiny and Sons Glass, 1-888-64-TINYS. Just call. Thank you. Right on the phone. Okay, I'll make an announcement that the meeting is being recorded for record keeping purposes. I have a motion to approve the minutes of November 14th. I make a motion we approve the minutes from November 14th. Yes, I'll, second. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Did we not have a December meeting? No. no I wasn't able to help. Oh, no. Okay, Executive Director Report. Well, um, no, since the last meeting, we've had, we continue to have more turnovers, and um, as the weather has changed and the temperatures dropped, we've had a lot of low heat, no heat, mm -hmm. um, some frozen pipes, some pipes burst, so we had a lot of uh, ordinary and extraordinary maintenance to take care of in that time. Um, I'd also say that last week we received the public housing notice from DHCD, which I put copies of it in the packet. Um, new budget guidelines came out, executive director uh, summary calculation worksheet as well. The most noteworthy thing on the public housing notice for the budget guidelines is there's a 10% increase to the annual, which is great for the housing authorities that are more challenged that let's say than we are. Um, we're retained revenue, but for those that are subsidized, the added 10% is very good. In addition, the um, director salary calculation worksheet is gonna, something that they've been working on for probably a decade to get some normalization, some consistency in the industry, fairness and equity in the uh, salary wrong for executive directors across the state, that it's where the industry is nationally. Um, so there will be housing authorities that are going to be meeting a bigger obligation for a whole host of reasons, not just because of uh, salary imbalances. And uh, turnovers, we continue to get them. As we were talking about the last meeting, it seems like the population's really aging out. Um, people are moving on to a longer term care. Some people are expiring, but uh, the workload continues, and so don't we. And so how many turnovers did you have um, in the last quarter, for example? In the last quarter, probably a dozen. Mm -hmm. yeah. So three yeah. We just got, month? yeah, three, three to months? four. Mm -hmm. And we just got uh, notice today mm -hmm. someone had expired, so mm -hmm. there'll be another one. And then other things kick in too if they're first floor units and we have a uh, list of people looking for a transfer to the first floor mm -hmm. that now requires two units be turned mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and all the ones coming out of um, that would be it okay finance yeah as the board recalls we do the quarterly reports and i'm obligated to uh, give the board or present at least to the board the, uh, the quarterly. You have the financial report in, in mm -hmm. your packet, and I wrote on the front of it to see uh, page two. If you look at the compilation report that we get from uh, Rick Shaw, and if you looked at page two, that would be this kind of letter. Mm -hmm. Oh, there you go, Judy has mm -hmm. it. Well, I think Joanna has it too. Yep, that's it. And on page two, um, the board preferred that we have that all captured on and make it as 
understandable as possible. If you look across the top, the 401, the 689, MRVP, federal. This is at where we are to date. Right, which is, this stand. is the end of December, so that would include our last quarter. So we have the uh, computer generated worksheet and the chair had asked the last uh, two meetings ago to use this and the board seemed to like it. So I have that in here. Now if you look at the program. Because this doesn't give us any gauge on right. where we actually are because it has actuals to date but it doesn't have proof num budget numbers in this. Correct. So you can't really see where you are year to date. So how does it, so this tells us where we are year to date. This will show us year over year and year to date. And if you go further into the compilation. We'll stay with the first page. Yep, first. okay. So on that this page. This gross the, income for, for that period. 400 dash Yeah. So the gross income is 357,550. What do you mean for that period or year to date? The first line is our year end reserve. Yes, I got okay. that. The gross income. So the gross income to date. Okay, which would so be December 31st, yes, yes. would um, be 357,559. And we spent 287, so we're ahead by 70. And if you, and it, that's correct. Great. Operating income. Um, and if you look, if you go down to the, uh, to the bottom or all the way across each program, they're all individual programs, 401 is state, mm -hmm. 689 is state, MRVP is our state rental voucher program. The federal is our turnkey, elderly, disabled, and family housing. Section 8 is our Section 8, and then our management account. So if you cut all the way across and, and if so you... So Section 8 is, is operating on a deficit right now. How come? Yeah, right now, because HUD, HUD doesn't typically give us the... They give you a general um, uh, funding each month, and some months they'll, they'll provide an amount that may be a little more than is expected and sometimes can be a little bit less and they reconcile it uh, more closely as they get to the end of the year. There are other, you can imagine, some portfolios probably have a million dollar requirement each month from HUD or even greater and so those are the ones that they're, they're real, really... This would be uh, admin money amount. only though, right? It's not yeah, that. Yeah, that's right. Do we don't get the same admin money every month? Uh, it, Typically, it changes uh, only when we have. Sometimes, as the chair may know, you, we, you can go beyond your allocation of vouchers and have more people than vouchers you have on the street looking. Um, you may have some that fall out of participation, mm -hmm. lose their housing, or become ineligible for some reason or another. But at the end of the at the end of the calendar year, calendar year, you need that's to right. Be squared up. That's right, and they do that. So okay. from time to time, you can have a little bit of a, it can, it can hover a little bit below where, you know, exactly where it will be, but there's no fear in that. And then the... Unless uh, they run out of money. Well, you know what, years ago, <laughs> yeah, there, yeah. there was a ton of money squirreled away, uh, you know, nationally in Section 8. And the federal government basically went out and, you know, I... I for lack of a better word, raided all the housing authorities and any surplus or reserve mm -hmm. they had, they grabbed it. You know, I mean, people were just sitting on it and you know, you have to use it for that purpose mm -hmm. so they balance right. their books. That's good. Thank you very much. Does okay. anybody have questions on where we stand financially? When is Rick Shaw coming? Well, um, Rick will be, as I said in the director's report, that we'll, you know, can talk a little bit further about finance right now. We just got the guidelines and we're putting the budget together and we've been working on it in the hope that it was coming since Thanksgiving. Um, he's scheduled to come on the February meeting which I think is the 12th and that'll be the meeting February we do the meeting? budget. Yeah, will every, anybody not be able to make that? February 12th? I think it's the 12th, the first I the think second. The second, that's the second Monday. Oh, the 12th is the second Monday? Yeah, okay. so I'm it's just the 6th or the 13th. 13, then. Fine. Were there many changes in the budget from the from DHCD? Um, Substantial it, or not? It gave, well, for us, no. Okay. For, because we're retaining revenue. Yeah. But for a lot of housing authorities, I mean, there's much more reporting. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's much more accounting and accountability. Okay. Um, more fiscal 
oversight. Um, but as far as us as a retained revenue, not a lot. You know, mm -hmm. there, there are a couple of huge projects that the state is obligated to um, in Boston, in particular, that are gobbling up a ton of money to the point where they're reeling in some of the housing authorities' capital projects that may not have started yet, just to ease their cash flow. All right. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Sorry. It was the same I, place yeah. where my... Uh, exactly. I, <laughs> the next thing we do should be the next thing in the pile, if, it, if we stay in the pile. <laughs> Mine's all over the place now. Um, Mine too. Okay. But, yeah. So, uh, looking good. at the job description, I'm glad it mirrors yours, except I would like to take out the selection of tenants, collection of rents, and the legal actions is fine. But why is she doing rent selection, tenant selection? Who does tenant selection now? Well, the program coordinators will Do typically we? will handle that function. Right. But as an executive function in that absence, I mean, I have done it. However, I, I have... Probably not in your job description. Well, though. no, but I've had to do it. And yeah, which is fine. chair said to mirror I, everything. So I would that's what that I out. did. Which paragraph is that? One, two, three, four. If the board agrees with me, I don't think the assistant director would be selecting tenants, collecting rents. I'm okay with legal one, two, actions, three, four, but five, what, I don't know what that means, though. One, two, three, four, five, well, an executive, an assistant executive director could, for example, do hearings. Could Fine. begin the process of going to going to housing court if necessary. Okay. Reach I'm out to federal or actions. state attorney. You might even want to put some of them in the job description, like for instance, sit on hearing panels, et cetera, et cetera. Does anybody have any questions regarding the assistant director's job description? My my question would be qualifications for that person. Oh yeah, we do have to have those what on they are. here. Mm -hmm. Generally, we put qualifications on a job description, correct? Correct. Yep. You're right. That is missing okay. from here. And so, um, do we want to discuss qualifications today? Well, again, my thought is where it's a mirrored position to begin with, the qualifications should pretty much be the same. And that individual is pretty much you if you're not here. Correct. So maybe maybe you, could, you could have a little less experience than perhaps the, the ED. Maybe if the ED is required five, maybe three. three. Yes, I'm just saying, right, because this is kind of a growth position. Right. Probably. So we certainly want, um, if you could pull your job description and mirror right. the um, mirror qualifications. And, and then yeah. get it back to the board. Right. Okay. Just all I see in here is responsibilities of either the director now or a program coordinator now. I just, I'm still baffled as to why we need an assistant director. I know at the last meeting I addressed my concerns about it and I was told that there are other, some, some other housing authorities that have assistant directors and you had named a few, John, and I reached out to them personally and none of them have an assistant director and I just, there's housing authorities three times the size of ours that don't have them. And I just think for such a small agency at this time, we've operated for how long has the housing authority been here? The 80s, 70s? Well, I think the concern 40, 50 is. 40, years, and we've we never needed one, and we haven't well, grown Well, we did any. need one, because when Sharon was out. That was a very. But it can happen again, and I really think. So we should, should spend 60 grand time. a year, and the off chance that we have a director that unfortunately passes away from cancer? I, I, I just. He I could just, be out well, on vacation, well. he could get sick. It is a board decision. I think we need a second in charge, one way or another. We need someone who's going to. Uh, I, 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 I well, just, that was I, that was exactly what was Lynn's thing. Whole, was whole was her whole thing was well, she was given that title and she had a few extra responsibilities. And she didn't do it. Do. That's the problem. So why not? Again, the full-time person that we just hired that we discussed about last meeting really only has a part-time workload. Why not give her a few extra things? In I just, I just think that amount of money could be put to better use for services for the elderly. Or I don't know. I just, I just think. Yeah, it's and I apologize. I wasn't at the last meeting, but okay. the sixty thousand dollar figure. Where she does just that come from? She just mentioned it. Where does that come from? I don't know. She uh, it's mentioned gotta it. It's got to be a minimum. I mean, if the new person is. Yeah. In the I mean, it's it's within. I think that it would be. That's that's a fair and accurate industry standard. I think. Um, but in response to some of the things that, that uh, you just mentioned, and through the chair, um, when the housing authority was organized, it was a different time, a different age, and the portfolio was brand new. The rules and regulations that governed public housing were probably smaller than the packet I had to put together for this meeting tonight. Um, 
the job has grown. The requirements, the reporting, everything gets more and more uh, demanding, not just of an individual in management, but on the housing authorities across the state. Okay. Year after year, and all these new reform acts and new regulations come to be because of forward thinking, being proactive, trying to hedge off things, or because of bad experiences that have occurred in other parts in the Commonwealth. So it's a hedge. We started talking earlier about finance and the financial condition of the housing authority. Many housing authorities, and to compare us to any others, really wouldn't be a fair, um, I feel, a fair thing to do because we're all uniquely different. And those retained revenue are in a different league than those that are 100% subsidized that have no money and few options, but still nevertheless have the same heightened demand that large housing authorities have or responsibilities and medium ones like us or small ones. They still have to do the same thing. Well, I kind of envision the new assistant director mirroring John for a couple of months and then branching off and maybe John will do some things because honestly, I don't think you have the time to write policy well because you're delivering packages and you're running all over the place. You're up inspecting Halifax. You're here, you're there, the other. And while he's out, the, other, the assistant can be in the office writing policy, preparing board packages, drafting letters, handling tenant complaints or whatever else comes in. Um, I just think that we need someone who can assist him in the day-to-day -day operations. Hopefully, we can bring on a couple of other housing authorities that we may be able to manage. Mm -hmm. And moving forward, if John's out on vacation, he can actually take a vacation and we have yeah. someone in charge. I just think we need another upper-level management instead of John and three clerks. The way I look at it. Well, I I've managed a lot of real estate in my life, and I, you know, I have over 157 units right now. But I do think you need some redundancy because there's because right. no, the number of re the reporting that was required by DHCD, which I do all the time, is quite onerous. And you know, again, when there's no backup, it, uh, there's, unless there's someone here in this group that can emerge out of that to, to be to have the authority to be in control, I, I mean, I think you really do need to have some kind of someone else who can who can take take on that responsibility i think it's really um i think it's a little dangerous to have just one person that has the complete oversight and the complete authority and not have any kind of back responsibility or any, or any kind of backup i um i don't right now all well, we have is and i well, hate to say all we well, have well nicely said and, and i think we were right. faced with this before right and I, and it hurt us for a while and we know it did and what we're doing is we're covering ourselves right. if, God forbid, something were to happen. I and I think there's the, there's the money in the budget to support the $60,000. Or $55,000. We, we haven't adopted a salary, salary yet. Now, in fairness, too, and, and again, I don't discount your, everything you've said at all. And I don't disagree with all that you've said at all. Um, there, Judy, you had mentioned before in an earlier meeting about fungibility. And, and while the chair mentioned, you know, you still want people to have ownership. I get that, but there's a delicate balance. And fungibility can happen where it's very fluid. We could moderate some, some existing personnel's, uh, modify it. Uh, I'm not interested in doing that either. Well, but, but there may be somebody or some, and I'm not saying right now. That's the case. Well, we have but these are the kinds of things. That That's right. We're considering approving, aside from taking right. out the responsibility to tenant selection. I actually want to uh, uh, include attend board meetings, and they can take the minutes of the meeting because yep. they should mm -hmm. be at every board meeting. So, God forbid something happens to you, they know what what's going on. They mm -hmm. know the decisions we made, why we made decisions. They know the policies, and they're engaged in the entire process. And actually, I know, that, and I'm kicking this down the road a little bit. We don't have to decide or discuss this tonight. But before hiring an assistant director, um, when we put it out and we have applicants, the board hires the ED, and generally the ED hires staff. But I would rather the 
board also hired the assistant director because it's pretty much near as the same job. I'm just throwing that out for consideration. But, um, the motion form? <laughs> if, if you're willing to do it that way, I would rather have us interview the final candidates that he would recommend to us and uh, appoint. I would say in conjunction with the ED. I, I, I would I would be very upset if that was me. In I would conjunction yeah, because with I the ED. you know, I have I hire a lot of my own staff and I yeah. and I've had situations where our CEO has wanted to be a the hiring and it's mm -hmm. and it's sometimes it, it can be problematic. I'm just saying I just think it should be a joint decision. Fine. I would oppose I would propose okay that as opposed for to a joint decision. Uh, is everybody comfortable with a joint decision or no involvement of the board? I think it's a good point that comments. you brought up, and I think everybody, anybody that has an opinion on it has, has expressed the, the sides of it. I mean, I don't know that it's actionable right now at this juncture, right? Because they still need to make updates and modifications. They can make a note to it's that. It's actionable if they want to act on it. We're just trying to agree whether we want to be part of this selection process or not. That's right. pretty much what it is. I would like to be, but doesn't mean that's just my opinion. Well, I think jointly, as yeah. you as yeah. as it was put, I think that 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 right. works for all. I don't all. think we need a motion to that. I think we yeah. can just go okay. on with the understanding that we'll be part of the yeah. selection mm -hmm. process. I think that's reasonable. All right. Should there be a motion put on the floor for the position itself to be approved? It's by already it? it's already in the. I know it's there. We need to it's adopt a long the time. job description, though. Or but I need to amend it. Right? Yeah, you do. Also. So did we ever take a vote to say we are going to hire that? Because I don't remember. I meeting. think we did at one point. Because I know at last, I know at the last meeting we had talked about it, and I just look. Well, the last time we talked about this, it was, as I expressed at the last meeting, it was news to me because always, when we talked about an assistant director, it was always well when the current titled assist, assistant executive director retires, well, we will hire somebody to replace her that can do both as she was supposed to. And now it's, well, now we have a full-time person and a part-time job, and we're going to hire another full-time. I, I just, well, I, I, that still hasn't been answered. I, well, I think we, we had assumed we were all on the page, same page, but um, let's just take a poll. I don't know if we, I think we've already decided to have an executive director position. Assistant. Assistant director position. Can I, I'll just say it's been in our reporting, organizational right. and well, budget, for many years. Well, well, the position has okay. been there, but it's yes. never really it's never, been. Right, and now we're trying to budgeted. move it forward. So let's just, let me just take a poll. We can vote it if you want. Um, I would like to see it a separate position. I would like to see it reflected in this job description with $55,000 salary, if that's what it takes, and do exactly what we we plan them to do according to this job description. How many feel it should be added on to someone else's duties now? I'm not sure we have anybody qualified that would do that. And really, they're not going to get their regular daily job done if they're mirroring him. But we were all in agreement basis. last time that yeah. this is a part-time job that we just hired a full-time person. Sure we no, were we weren't. Agreement. I think that that was your opinion because then the, then the conversation, well, no, the last, I, I didn't. Did. Did. No, we, what was said was that the belief was that maybe the, set, the Section 8 coordinator wasn't working as uh, to the high, higher volume that ordinary or national average Section 8 coordinators the would The old be. Section 8 yeah, coordinators? Yeah, meaning like 300 units. 300 vouchers per person. And then the conversation sort of grew into program coordinators too, that may do 100, may go on the federal part time doing, you know, uh, fewer than 50, but also on the state side doing, uh, you know, 100, 125 when industry standard is up to 500. So those are full time positions too. And I know that my staff works a full time job. All right, so to address Joanne's concern, we can either make a motion or we can discuss it and come to an agreement, but I think we should resolve and consider Joanne's concern. I would rather just have the assistant executive director not coupled with other duties because I don't think they'll get the job done. I, I agree, and I also think it's very difficult to have someone who is senior in this team here when they're kind of doing similar right. level of work. I, I just think it, it brings up all kinds of staffing concerns and I right. I think you're better off having a separate, distinct and clear line of chain of command that's very specific with specific duties and also has the authority 
to make decisions in the absence of the executive director because right. I think it gets yeah. problematic. Is that in here too? And it should be. It, it should be in there because that also gets very problematic when you have comparable staff doing that. Right. Um, I'll add too, their jobs, their, their not, job requirements are going to take them well beyond 35 hours. You know, they'll have their, just like my job is 37 and a half hours. We all know I work a lot more than that. And this person will be coming on, coming potentially to the board meetings. The person they will have, be doing the required. minutes. Stick so, it in there. So there's a lot. I, I, I just couldn't see it not being a standalone person. We also have to add um, monitoring the FAS score, developing the agency plan, and managing yeah. other housing authorities as we bring them on board. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's elaborate on it. The authority to make executive decisions. Yeah, I think you have duties as assigned by right, yourself, right, yeah. too. Yeah. Okay. Pretty and much it, everything. They, they, re they are required to attend the board meetings and take the minutes. And you're taking out selection of tenants. Yeah. Please. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, I've been here for a while, and we've kicked the can around for a long time in reference to the position. I myself personally don't like to be handcuffed by anybody in the trade. I mean, it's it's tough. You're doing your job. Don't get me wrong. Could that change tomorrow? It could. I like the idea of having an assistant to you. I really do. I do too. I do. Right. Any so further guess, consideration? All right. So we're moving forward with the goal of hiring mm -hmm. an assistant ten executive director. And, and I will update this. John will up, um, amend this. And we'll we'll look to have it approved at the next board meeting. Can I ask how do we how do how is that posted the position? Well, we're going to approve the job description next month. Okay. We're going to look at the budget that John is going well, to put gonna together be with next the new month. budget guidelines next month, and in it it will have the salary. So I expect that next month we'll be able to approve this job description and approve the salary that goes with it based on the budget he presents. Is Rick Shaw going to be there at the yes, board meeting is. to yep. explain that to us? Yep. And as long as we're assured we have the money for, with Rick Shaw and we can move forward, then we can post it shortly thereafter, I would expect. The only other thing I would suggest, too, is that you look at this organizational chart and make sure that the lines of ch the, the reporting lines are correct, because it may be that, for example, you may want the maintenance superintendents to report to you. So I'm just saying, I think you, you may want to make sure that, that, that oh, you, I see. you know yep. what I mean, that you have direct reports where you think you need them. Um, there you go. So yeah. That's not yeah. 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 yeah, not everybody has to go through right. the assistant right. director. So, so you might want to be clear about Maintenance right. will go through you That's and right. the mod yeah. coordinator may, you and may the want to, yeah. program staff may want to go through the assistant director. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Actually, that's a right. good idea. Yeah. Yeah, right. So think about it a little more, John. Um, I think that's a good idea. This way you get spent. Yep. <laughs> yep. No, you're right. That's actually a great idea. Um, that's actually how it works in Quincy. <laughs> that's how it works for me. <laughs> yeah. So the um, Mass Narrow had sent out a summary, I mean a uh, survey. I'm supposed to get it back to them, but they wanted the board's input. And, you know, I, I, I thought that I had put these are just a few questions that apply in a different way to um, every housing authority. But the first question is board size. And you, you answer them. One is your, that your greater preference. Two would be your second. So on the board side, uh, board size, the decision uh, would be do you, if you wanted to have a seven member board, or a five-member board. Now we're currently a five-member board, and they're tweaking it. And um, two of those positions are one's going to be a tenant. That's supposed to be correct. Right. right. And the second is the state appointee. So right. there'll be in three the five? elected from in that's the five. right. So in the five, it says we'll require shrink and town elected board from four to three. Right. Because then, if it's five, three are elected. One is. Uh, appointed attended. by the state, and one one right. is a housing authority tenant. That's right. So there'll be three in a town wide election. So I'm fine with that. With the five would be our number one, well, and then the seven well, would be well, number it, two. Well, uh, that's only my opinion. Does everybody like the five, or you think we should try to get two more people to run for the board? I like the five. I don't I don't think the only get, reason I don't think why I like the seven is because we 
a lot of times run into not having a quorum or canceling because right. one person cancels. Because let's say well, we're Well, that would be increase our quorum. The quorum too, would though. go up. We would four. need four we need instead of four. Four people, right. True. Well, that. I guess that's out the window. <laughs> <laughs> that it was a good thought. <laughs> I just thought more people were <laughs> yeah, yeah, more, more choices, right? Choices, right? Yeah. So if well, it were, if, so. if, if for whatever reason it, it did turn out that you know the consensus among the the state was that all boards should ramp up to seven members, um, <laughs> they want you to put it into an order here. Would you want to add two tenants? Would you um, vote by? Mail, online, or administrative. Are we supposed to be filling this out? Are we filling this out now? Well, yeah, you know what? Separate collective? Yeah, because yeah, I think he needs to submit I'll it. I'll still correct. submit it, even though they want. They were hoping to get it all back by the end of last week, but the okay. board didn't Let's meet. Let's at least okay. express our decision. So right. he's okay. going to type up what uh, we yeah, yeah, sure. as oh, the board we and send it in tomorrow. Okay. Add two tenants by tenant. No. Okay, I will tell you that almost nobody wants to participate, so that's out. Well, we are deciding on a five member, so we can skip over this section. Yeah, it almost that. If that's right, it would that's be. That's right. It would be not applicable. That's right. Okay. How to shrink from four to three? First expiring seat, I would say. Yeah, Which I, is what we've done. Because mm -hmm. a runoff election would be too high. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And right. we've actually done that because some boards haven't had their election yet for that that one to attrition down. I think we can still have an opinion on decision two, just in case everybody else goes with seven. Well, let me ask you this: Add two tenants or add one tenant? Because then one. Okay, I, I would tend to think that mm -hmm. that's where most people's thinking is, anyways. Whether it's because there's disinterest or or just to and then to just function. let the let the board of selectmen appoint them. Okay. So if is that all right with everyone? Else? Yeah. I'm just expressing my opinion. Okay, so one and you two there. Agree with me. <laughs> um, Going down to the fourth one, if five members, decision three, how to seat the tenant on a board, appointment by a board of selectmen, or um, online, or a tenant election administered by DHCD or yeah. third uh, party. Selection, yeah. selectmen. Let the selectmen appoint Well, you know, just quick aside, they've had a year and a half to try to come up with how to seat a tenant, well, and yeah. they haven't done a thing yet. So right. I think local. Um, Local control, control is, is but to get But if you get a third party election, I mean, that, that's crazy. Yeah. But here's, we don't have, in most housing, we don't have LTOs. So how, how on earth they... Well, in the, I know, in the guidelines, they do talk about local tenant organizations. In and if us, you don't have them... Us trying to engage them in a yeah, tenant organization. You have the outreach. So we have an obligation to outreach mm -hmm. and explain to them why they want to have a local tenant organization, the benefits of it, and we do fund them. They get funding, um, and sometimes they work out, sometimes they don't. There's a lot of infighting. We have local boards. We couldn't even get anybody yeah. to volunteer. We have them in Quincy, and they're on and off, on and off. But all we can do is try. Um, how to fill the seat if a waiver is required because no eligible Public housing tenants interested. Where are you reading? That would be the fifth the question. Fifth, the fifth big question. question. What about decision, decision, four, decision four. four? That's it. That's decision four. Oh, how to fill a seat if a waiver is required because four. Of the Yeah, decision oh, how four. How to fill a seat? One. Uh, the board of selectmen. Right? Board of selectmen. Yeah. Appoints yeah. resident tenant base. Definitely. Based. Okay. And Do you currently have a tenant on no. board? No. Non applicable. Great. Well done, John. There you go. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll get the feedback. Back to Mass Narrow, who conducted it, um, and then I guess at some point maybe it'll help push the process for the state to come up with the guidelines on how to get these seats filled, so we have a five-member board. That would be nice. Really I lost my agenda again. Okay. Did you pick it up? No. Nope. Next, next one is a it's a bulk of. Mass narrow survey. Oh, we just no, did that. Okay, so now we have um, approvals. Yeah. Approved change order number one to the contract of Key Moore Painting and con Contracting Company for the apartment door hinge replacement in McDonald Way. Yep, that's a change order um, that extended time for performance to 93 days from the 90. 
there's no change in the in the money and the job's been completed but it's just the first step we have to take to close out the project okay so i can have a motion i'll, I'll make a motion to approve change order number one to the contract of Pimor painting and contracting company for the apartment door hinge replacement at mcdonald way can i have a second second all those in favor aye aye okay. approval of the certificate of completion consolidated for pm Moore painting for the apartment door hinges. The project's been completed. The first step, the first item was to fix the, was to amend the, the contract with that one change order. The project has been completed and it requires an action of the board to uh, approve it. I have a motion. Okay, I'll move to approve the certificate of completion for consolidated for Pmore uh, Painting and Contracting Company for the apartment door hinge replacement McDonald Way. I have a second. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you. The they approved the final payment for a key more for the apartment door hinge. Yep. Final payment in the amount of three ninety nine. Last payment owed on the contract was um, three hundred and ninety nine dollars. It's the chair just it read. It requires an action of the board. I make a motion to approve the final payment to P more painting and contracting for three ninety nine. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Approve the certificate of completion for consolidated continental flooring for the common area flooring replacement at McDonald Way. Okay. Um, Where was this common area in the. What uh, we did is at McDonald Way, the federal elderly and disabled, we installed new flooring on the first floor. The landings and on the second floor in common, the common area. Or, or no, common areas. in the common okay, areas. Fine. So the tile. Um, it's all. A, it's a VCT tile, and then we did a rubber uh, nosing and tread yep. up all the stairs. Came okay. out fabulous. Okay. So that requires a uh, action of the board. I'll make a motion to approve the cert certificate of completion consolidated for Continental Flooring Company for the common area floor and replacement at McDonald Way. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we need to approve the final payment for continental flooring for the common area. Okay, I'll move to approve the final payment for continental flooring company for the common area floor and replacement McDonald Way. Final application for payment is in the amount of $2,301.50. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay, next motion. We have award and authorize the executive director to execute a contract for the rubbish removal to waste management in Massachusetts. Okay. What I'd like to, the next thing in the uh, packet, I think that I see Jim has it there, Joanna has it as well. Because um, they, we can, it, it follows all the consecutive. The next uh, oh, thing of, of uh, motions. So the first one is waste oh, management. Okay. Waste management was the uh, only respondent, um, wow. and uh, you know, the good numbers. But basically, I think that any, they may be so well priced that competitors, I think, maybe shy away okay. from it. I don't know. Uh, Did, were they the uh, contractor we used previously? Yes. And. Is this, in, is this just trash or is this recycling? This is just trash. We, Who does recycling? This we account? do that through the town. Yeah. Okay. I have a motion to award and authorize the executive executive contract for the rubbish removal for, to Waste Management Massachusetts. Waste Management of Massachusetts, Inc. That's the corporation. How I set up each state, they set up in a different. Okay, I'll, be, I'll move to award and authorize the executive director to execute a contract for rubbish removal to Waste Management of Massachusetts, Inc. Um, contract is for a three-year period. Monthly rubbish charge removal shall be $925. Great. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Four, no. Aye. The uh, <coughs> next page coincides with the agenda, next agenda item, RFP uh, for the electrical services. If you look at the agenda, um, <coughs> the form of a motion has been uh, typed up. Warren authorized the executive director to execute a contract for electrical service to the Bright Light. Correct. Bright Light Electrical. 
and this contract will be for a three-year period. We just had the two. These two, two, two separate bidders. bids. Correct. Okay. They, as uh, Joanna asked before, they they were the contractor before, and we still bid it out, and uh, they're still the low bid. They're close, though, huh? Yeah. yeah. Usually they yeah. don't come in that close. Well, the hourly rate for Sundays and holidays, boy, it really jumped. Do we have a lot yeah. of well, Sundays and holiday calls? Well, it seems if you, if you usually feel the pain. You know? It seems like you do. Never anybody even maintenance punches in. Well, the reason I ask that is because it might be cheaper to go with the other one at that yeah. point. <laughs> but probably not. No, but they're the low, they're the bright lights, the lowest and most responsible. If you take a look at Matthews, also they go they go one sixty five for the helper and for That's the tool That's for the journeyman. Yeah. 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 I'll make a motion to award and authorize the executive director execute a contract for electrical services to Bright Light Electrical Company Incorporated. An RFP was generated and quotes were received on December 28, 2017. Bright Light Electrical was the low proposer. See attached quote. The contract is for a three year period. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. On to award and authorize the executive director to execute a contract for plumbing services to Multi Plumbing and Heating Inc. So it looks like we had two bidders on that also. Correct. Okay. I'll make a motion to award and authorize the ED to execute a contract for plumbing services to Multi Plumbing and Heating, three year period. Uh, what's it, right? The three year yep. period. Second. All those in favor. Aye. 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 On to the next. Award and authorization. Award and authorize the executive director to execute a contract for fire alarm testing and monitoring to flight alarm operation. I'll make a motion to award and authorize the executive director to execute a contract for fire alarm testing and monitoring to flight alarm corporation. Contract is for a three year period. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Wow, wow. no, there's a big difference. Yeah. yeah. There's a huge difference. Oh, difference. And, and, uh, actually, we used Sounder. Do you? Well, like 250% more. Oh, God. Wow. Isn't, it, isn't that amazing? Wow. Mm -hmm. and, then onward, and then, but they competed, but they competed on the monthly monitoring by $2. I know, right? Mm. That was a pretty standard charge wow. on monthly uh, monitoring. Mm. Okay. Uh, next motion. Award and authorize the executive director to execute a contract for supply and installation of new flooring to Carpet Inc. doing business as Floor Express. Oh. They the only ones that bid? Yes. Okay. Where, where are they located? Uh, uh, I think it's in front of the industrial park. So um, I'll make a motion to award and authorize the executive director to execute a contract for supply and installation of new flooring to Carpets Incorporated, doing business as Floors Express. An RFP was generated and quotes were received on December 28, 2017. Floors Express was the low proposer. The contract is for a three-year period of time. John, is this for unit turnover? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Or if we have an accident, we need to uh, repair, replace, okay. etc. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. okay. I think the next item. Approval of the fair market, the 2015 2018 fair market rents for the Boston Cambridge Quincy area for all bedroom sizes. Those are right here. Yeah. So we're adopting 100% of the fair market rent Correct. as our payment standard. I'll make a motion to approve and adapt the final fiscal year 2018 fair market rents of Boston, Cambridge, Quincy, Mass, Metro area for all bedroom sizes. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And passbook interest rate. Good for you, John. You found that because I never did get back to you on it. <laughs> so uh, what we have is the. Uh, just a reaffirmation of the PHA passbook savings rate of 0.82. It hasn't really changed, um, but we're required to keep them updated and keep them current. Uh, the last one we did uh, was still at the 0.82. Good job. Okay, so. But that would require an action. I have a motion to approve and adopt 
the current, no, well, re approve and affirm, reaffirm the current passbook and savings rate at 0.82%. Where does it say that? Am I looking right at it? It's here. Oh. I think you just figured it out. Yeah. You take the FDIC savings national rate, the time that we establish it, okay. it's on the last book, the back, and it has to be between 0 and 0.87. You know, when we did the math and we added it, it comes out to 0.82. So we're still below the 0.87. Okay. You made a motion, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah.